we've been talking about loyalty as pathway to honor. And uh, we looked at, we started looking at the stages of disloyalty, stages of disloyalty. We started by saying that disloyalty usually begins with an independent state, and from there it goes towards offense stage, and then from there go to the passive stage. That, and we we're talking about the passive stage. There was a scripture that we read last week that really ring, rang a bell. And uh, many Christians don't look at that scripture. It's a very, very powerful scripture in Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 10. The scripture says, Cause be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cause be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Now, many people are suffering from things and they, they, they don't know about but actually, they are the architect of their own problem. You know, I didn't even share this with my wife. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a pastor called me and said, Apostle, I want to apologize for some things that happened when I was there. You know, I, and, and I'm, I'm like, my brother, I don't have anything against you. I don't have any, anything against you. Um, and I love you. And I love your wife, I love your family, and I love your ministry. So it's always good because there's always a tomorrow. And many a times, there are the things we do have trickle effects. And when we begin to see those things happening, we begin to say, ah, why is this thing happening? Why is that one happening? If we can always look back and think back, reflect, we'll find, <laughs> we'll know what, where we missed it. We know where we missed it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can see from the above scripture that God expects you to get involved when you have something to contribute in church. Uh, this verse is actually teaching us that it is a cause to be uninvolved when you have something to pitch in. Passivity is dangerous because you move rapidly into the critical stage of disloyalty. And now, in order to become critical, you must be uninvolved. <laughs> you cannot be critical when you are involved. Because it will look as if you are contradicting yourself. You know, how can my sister be, be, be critical now? Because she's the one that is putting the service together. <laughs> you need to see, her brain now is calculating, okay, this person is not here yet. I know, I know what is happening, because I've been there. <laughs> are you getting my point? <laughs> Oh, it's like somebody wants to take, uh, uh, maybe the person she feels to take uh, announcement is not, oh my goodness, who will take announcement today? Your brain will be, you cannot be involved and be critical of the same system that you belong to. You will not. That's why I observed these things some time ago when I was still back home in my, con my country of birth, that there was, in the government of that time, there was one of the ministers, um, you know, you know, the political, in political class, one of the ministers there was kind of, he gave audience to an interview, you know, and something happened. During that interview, he said some things that was actually at variance, you know, to what his current, is part of the government. What they stood for. On Monday, he met his resignation letter. And there, was, there was no need to waste time about it. Because it means that you are a part of the system, but you do not believe in the system. And you don't believe in an agenda or something that we are doing. You did not speak in the General Executive Council meeting. You did not pass the message to the, to the, to the president. You did not pass the message to the person in charge. You did not communicate it. Only for you to go and give audience to, uh, to an interview on TV. And that's what most people do. They have opportunity. Their pastor is very easy, very simple. They can talk. They can communicate. You get my point. But they won't talk. They rather go outside and destroy the family and put everybody down. And that's not right. It is passivity that gives rise to that. You cannot be critical of the same system that you are part of. Once you are involved, you will no longer be critical. How will there be a sister, a sister precious that take the, took the praise and worship, and then after service, just be grumbling, man, I didn't like the praise and worship. The praise and worship in this church is not good. Praise and, how, 
can you be critical of the same? You, it's your system. It's your system. If you want a honest feedback, then we can do an honest feedback from the people. Not from you, because you are part of that choir system. Praise the Lord, somebody. So don't you know that an uninvolved person more readily sees the fault around him? True of us. It's true. You know, as they say, it is the bystander who sees the worker, who, who sees that the worker is digging a crooked trench. Because he's the one, he's not the work, he's not the worker digging. So he is just standing by. So he's like, hey, it's just like uh, soccer or sports uh, spectators, fans. We always see what the players are not doing well. If, if, you, if you, oh my God, if you just cross it, if you, if you just cross it like this, oh my God, that, oh, that would have been a touchdown. You go and touch down and see how it is to fly up and touch down. <laughs> So it's not, it's not as easy as we, as we always see it. The uninterested leader is uninvolved for a reason. It's uninvolved for a reason. Why was he so quiet? That's the question. Why was he so quiet? And remember the story of Absalom that we have always been observing. Absalom. I, I want us to go to 2 Samuel. Please project. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 22. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 22. Remember the story of Absalom. He went through the stage of this particular stage of passivity. Amnon had raped and disgraced Absalom's sister, Tamar. Absalom was doubted, doubtlessly very angry with his half brother at this time. And for two whole years, the Bible says he was passive. Two whole years, he didn't, there was no phone call. There was no text message. If you connect, they will not answer you. If you try to say, hey, hi, they, will, they, they block you. There was nothing. You know why? Not because they don't love you. It, they, just, they just slided, they just slid into a passive state. And that state is close to critical. It's a very dangerous stage. And then he was doing nothing. He wasn't supporting his father. He wasn't against his father. <laughs> I, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Well, they just, they just do what they're doing. It's like husband and wife quarrel. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Mm. Your food is there. <laughs> mm. you, you know the hmm. And then you're, what, what, what about this? Thing? I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this house, F. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this house, F. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this house. So it's always, it's, it's always good. A, a man told me some time ago, he said, my wife has not spoken to me for two, two months. I said, what happened? He said, well, I don't know. That's the way we do. No, that should not be the way you do <laughs> That should not be the way you do. It should not be the way you do. Hmm? Listen, if every time you have a quarrel, you settle it emotionally. F uh, husband and wife emotions. Or using the right to sexually. Then you are not building relationship. You are just building nonsense. Because that thing that you think you will bring their set to... What brings said to me is dialogue. Let's talk. What caused this? What is the problem? What is this? Talk. Not using, you go buy gift. Not gift. Let's talk about this issue that is really causing problem now. We can buy gifts later. And no, many people don't want to come to that round table. That's where the problem. They don't want to come to that round table. And what is not bringing them to the round table is ego. The way they were brought up. What is tradition? <laughs> That's your, 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 it has become your trade. It has become your style. Have you heard somebody say, That's just me? <laughs> it's not you, you learned it. It was your ego that is talking. Humble yourself. Let's talk this thing over. 
and move forward. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All right, Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 22. And Absalom spake unto his brother, I am not neither good nor bad. Are you, are you in verse 22? Okay, you are, is that the King James? Neither good or what? For Absalom hated him not because he had forced his sister Tamar. Let's force it. But take notice, take notice of the indifferent that existed between both of them. It quickly degenerated into murder. From that passive stage, before you know what's happening, that guy became a murderer. He killed his brother. And that's happening in the church of Jesus Christ. That's happening in the Christendom today. That's happening in marriages. Resolve that passivity. Come out of that. Of that. I was talking, was, was, there, was it this week I was talking on the TV? I was telling them, and everybody has been calling me, but from, from back home, from Europe, from the UK, I was like, wow, that, that was, that was, I'm like, yeah, my, my people here are saying that it's wonderful. I didn't know that that was. <laughs> I was just talking. I was just, I was just talking. Because these, those were very practical questions. If you go and watch the whole full series, it was part one and part it was whole practical. But this time around part two, I'm like, let's face this thing. Let, let, come, let's just leave book now and talk. And then it came out like that. You know, it came out like that. So it degenerated. He was passive. I'm not talking. You're not talking. We are, be careful of the stage that you are not talking. The devil so wicked seeds when people don't talk. The serious demonic manipulations when people don't talk. You are not marking time. You are marking demonic agendas. When people don't talk, be careful. When couples don't talk, be careful. When friends don't talk, be careful. When enemies don't talk, be careful. Because no matter what, even enemies we have to settle. And on the premise of discussion, it has to always be on the table. Even for enemies to settle, they must talk. For war to cease, people must talk. Be careful of passive people. Be careful of people who, who keep mute when they are mad. You say, that's how I cope. Don't cope like that. Don't cope like that. Let's talk about this thing. Let's do what? Let's talk about this thing. Sir, 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 if I talk, I may say something wrong. Don't worry. Just talk. Just talk. Blow it out. Blow it out. Second Samuel chapter 13. Read that, that, go to verse 28. I want to show you guys something there. This was where the thing now mature. It mature and it was very, very devastating. devastating. He broke the whole family, the royal, whole royal house. He broke the whole country. Everybody, what? A brother killed his brother? What? But that has been in the heart for two years. He has been cooking it. He has been conceiving this thing for two years. We were told of a case of a guy who stayed. I don't know uh, who told me that story recently. A guy stayed, you know, accommodate, uh, family accommodated this guy. Only for this guy to murder both the, the man, the woman, and the children. Something may have transpired. Something may have happened. Something may have been said. Something may have been cooking somewhere. Talk, but they refuse to what? Talk. When you don't talk, the demons talk. I repeat, when you don't talk, the evil spirits talk. It's not only God that talks when you are quiet. It is your most dominant emotional trigger that talks when you are silent. Let's read this scripture in verse 28. Now Absalom had commanded his servant saying, Mark it now. When Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? I'm the first son of this royal family. Finish him. Be courageous and be valiant. Don't demonstrate your strength by abusing your wife. Don't demonstrate your, your, your capacity, your martialness by, by oppressing your husband. Don't manipulate. 
Because most, this generation thrives so much on witchcraft, and witchcraft is the mystery of manipulation. Oh, you don't know what you have just done to me. Mm. Wash, wash, wash. That tears is a manipulation. It's a manipulation. It's a manipulation. It's a manipulation. Are you happy? When I talk about being quiet, I'm not talking about someone who has a naturally, who has a naturally subdued personality. You know, there are some people that have naturally subdued personality. Even at that, even at that, when the Holy Spirit comes, it triggers, it moves you into a different level, a different realm, you know. I'm actually talking about someone who is normally outgoing, but is consciously subdued and detached because of a particular happening. Be careful of those kind of people. Depression is close, it's around the corner with that. Uh, suicide is around the corner. Murder is around the corner. So many evil work. The Bible said, you know, there was one day I was having an issue with a particular brother, my son in the Lord, and then it was, and he was a pastor. But he, what he was doing was so much, and I was like, what's going on here? Finally, he connected with someone who I considered, you know, uh, in a place of authority to me. Now, the moment, I didn't really know. I've already communicated my heart to him, and I was clear. But he was having a lot in him. To still pour. So he communicated that to this person in that position of authority. And this person, he called me and said, see, 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 see. I said, ah, wow. Well. I said, okay, listen, you are, you are guiltless until knowledge comes. If knowledge comes and you don't take the right action, then your guilt will remain. Then God will hold you responsible. So when that knowledge came and the person called me, I was to come and preach on this altar. I quickly called him. And I said, this was what I had, this was what I had, I am sorry. But the Lord had instructed me that you dare not stand on the pulpit when there is a brother, when your brother is not happy. Are you getting my point here? I called him and I called the person that he reported to and I knelt down. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying here? I knelt down, not to him, he is my son, but I knelt down to that person of authority. And that I did right in that office. I said, I'm sorry I did not know that this happened and this, 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 this happened. But honestly, when anything goes on and like that, come direct to me. Always, 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 always don't allow passivity to move into criticality. It becomes very dangerous. When, do you know when that was, the scripture that God used, that's why you need to have the Bible, the word of God inside of you. The scripture that God used to tell me, stop, you can't come to this pulpit now. Tell, I think I called my wife or somebody to continually take him uh, praise uh, or worship. Why I settle with my brother and I settle with God. What was that scripture? He said, wherever there is strife and anger, uh, and, you know, anger and bitterness, he said, there abided every evil work. I can't really pull it out. Somebody can pull it out and you know. He said, wherever there is strife, wherever there is anger, where there is bitterness, he said, there abide every evil work. Every evil work. And the, uh, me, that I'm a deliverer minister, I know what it means when the Bible says every evil work. Uh, I expanded it. Every evil work can be that no matter what you do, nothing will work. Yeah. It means that you have invited demons into your territory because of that your state. Did, has anybody found it? Yeah, okay. James 3, 16. Can we read it together? For where envy and strife is, there is confusion, number one, and every evil word. I say, eh? So if there is always strife in the house, in the family, in the world, there is every evil work. Evil work. <laughs> Uh, let, let me not start opening, not go into another talking about evil work. But that's what I mean. It's deep. I have to quickly settle that because I don't want evil to take advantage of that situation. Are we together now? Praise the Lord, somebody. 
At least, at least when, at least now, I can still go to him as my brother. Can go to his house. You can come to. Her. We can still connect. We can still relate. Are you getting my point? Don't allow the enemy to take advantage of that. Are you happy? I am everybody around. I, I want everybody around me to be happy. I'm concerned when someone is unusually calm and cool. Especially when that person is somebody that is not usually calm and cool. <laughs> so every good leader must ensure that those around him are secure and content. Secure is very important. Content is both parties that work on that. Because there are some people, even if you kill yourself, they will not be content. So you have to be content. Because God takes people in journeys and in levels. From one stage to another. So don't believe that. Now, somebody one time, we, we just started Mission House. I'll make you guys laugh a little bit. We just started Mission House. And the offering that people will give in church. The first offering of Mission House was 30 Naira. 30 Naira. And at the end of the service, 20 Naira, we have to go back because we have to give transport fare to the people who gave, gave the offering. You don't understand my point. <laughs> and total amount of the old church was 30 Naira. So now that money itself, even that 30 Naira, we are, you are saying 30, even that 30 Naira, 20 Naira must go because somebody is coming from Ojodu beggar. Somebody is coming from uh, Ogudu. Somebody is coming from K2. So you have to give five naira. I'm not talking about Nigeria of today or the economy of today. Then, so give five naira, you take, you take, you take. So and then I ask Big Mommy, what is left? He says, it's ten naira. Okay, keep the ten naira. That's the offering we had today. The rest was just a uh, uh, film trick. So let's... <laughs> the rest was just film trick. So they were... And he continued, but in the midst of that kind of situation, sir, my dear brother, a, a young, a brother came, married with children, came. He's a transporter. He says, sir, uh, I want the church to give me a loan to buy a car. Eh? Eh? No, it's my own duty to make you secure in this church. But the content aspect of it, we have to work together to, ah, uh, ah. Uh, me that I'm your pastor there. Have you seen me wear one kind of this thing? Uh, so God will help us in Jesus' name. Sometimes people need to caution their expectation. We sometimes if you expect too much, you run into trouble. You run into problem. Relax, calm down. Calm down. And it's it's over expectation that is causing so many problems. What somebody, you know what your wife is receiving in a month. You are asking for an aircraft. And she just paid this, 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 this. He said, you know I'm a retiree. We know. But you calm down. <laughs> Be calming down. <laughs> you know what your husband is collecting. And then you are buying Louis Vuitton. You have demand for this one. You demand for handbag. You demand for this. You demand for this. And you demand for everything. Demand, if I'm the one. I will give my employer your account, my, your account number. And they will just, so that I know that the salary doesn't come to me. It goes to you, you pay all the bills, you do everything. You know? <laughs> so you, 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 you take all, just let, so that you manage the whole stuff. When it finishes, it finishes. You know there is no one with me. Are you getting my point here? Praise the Lord, somebody. No, I know you bought that with your money. I heard that. You know, I used to hear things. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if King David had noticed Absalom's nonchalant attitude, for example, he might have been able to prevent his son from becoming a full-fledged anarchist. True of us. If he had noticed the nonchalant attitude of... Uh, now, but we live in a generation that even this generation, even if you notice it and you spot it and you tell the person, pride will not allow them to accept it. One of the greatest gifts of the leader and the follower is humility. It's not only the lead that needs to be humble. Even the leader needs to be humble. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All right. Do I still have time to talk a little bit, to start talking about critical stage? 
I know I've taken your time. So we'll move, we'll move you on to next week. Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's start talking about the critical stage of disloyalty. A disloyal person is not passive forever. He progresses into the next step of being critical. Hmm. I hear all the hmm. hmm. <laughs> and it's very true. Your hmm is well, well received. And it's true. Because many of you sitting here, you have at one time or the other observed and see exactly this, these stages play out in the lives of people around you. You've seen it. You knew when the language began to change. You knew when the loyalty started swaying. You knew. But what many people don't know is the root cause of the things they see in the periphery. If you are, if you are a member or a leader in a church, a worker in the church, condition your mind in such a way that you are ready for any dimension of feedback. You know why? Because feedbacks are always there to make you better and to move the vision further. This is the stage of noticing and magnifying faults. At this stage, a more hill suddenly became, becomes a mountain. What the pastor has been doing for years that you have celebrated automatically becomes an error. You have gotten to the critical stage now. Have you heard somebody talk, uh, you know, maybe in movies or maybe someone has even come to you. I've experienced that and people have come to tell me, you know, those kind of things. I've seen it happen that a, a wife will be giving feedback to the husband. The husband will say, you, uncle, what about you? What about you? Anytime you see that, criticality has started. We have left issues. We are now on personality. Let's talk issues. Stop moving it to personality. I know I am not perfect. I know I have my issue. I, we're talking about what you just displayed now. Let's address this one. Praise the Lord. In a church, for example, you will find this critical person, he will find fault with the preaching of the word of God. When the pastor is preaching, he complains about the pastor taking too much time. The day the pastor gives him opportunity to preach, it takes a longer time than what the pastor has taken. But you know his own case, nobody is there to complain about him. Because he is not, the spotlight is not on him. The spotlight is on the pastor. Many people think that leadership is easy until they arrive there. And then they discover, and say, who? <sighs> there are many people, they can't stop what they've started. They are suffocating. But they are like, if I stop now, <laughs> what will people say? And I've always said, continuing in the wrong will never make you right. Don't start anything to try and prove a point. No, in fact, if you start anything to prove a point, don't start a ministry to prove a point. Because you will be pointed. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know point and kill. <laughs> okay, let's leave that one now. This, so this is very, very important. We're talking about loyalty, pathway to honor. The day you sing and somebody says, ah, that song was powerful. That song was powerful is a very Canadian sandwich kind of feedback. You know? Oh, powerful song. Um, ah, just, just a little bit of working on this. That, that's Canadian. That's, they're so polite in giving you those polite, uh, those sandwich kind of feedback. Now, but if you meet an American, for example, okay, it tells you, oh my goodness, that was trash. Have you watched, <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you watched, um, have you watched this, uh, music uh, competitions? Yes. And then they will now hit the buzzer bear? Yes. 
Have you seen some people, where all of them, they just give the view, the man, that's not good. No, they didn't even show a little bit of kindness. And like mama, we said that the dad, we said, he didn't even add a little butter to your mouth when you were communicating that. Which is true, but, but some people are just blunt. Hey, what, what did you, what, were, what, what was that? <laughs> Have you heard somebody say, what was that? <laughs> what, what, what? I've heard someone say, you're not made for this industry. Yes. I think you can try something else. It will work. It kills morals. Huh? It destroys uh, your, 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 your drive. You know? But that's criticality for you. Criticality never sees your potentials. Criticality sees what you are not doing right. Most of the people that, that their teachers condemned in the classroom end up becoming great men. Ben Carson, so many of them, even Bill Gates, most of them do a dropout because their teachers told them that you cannot do it. They ended up becoming a star in that very thing. May God surround you with those who believe in you. Amen. Because we are faced with people who, never, who will never give you a chance. Life will never give you a chance. People are surrounding you too that will not give you a chance. But give yourself a chance. Give yourself a try. Yesterday I watched a boxing com competition in the ring. I can't remember the name. Now. I think the name of the guy was Danny. And he, played, he fought with another guy. He threw a punch. A deadly punch, and he dislocated his right hand. So he fought the rest of the game with his left hand. His right hand couldn't couldn't work. And the the, 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 the coaches and the umpires said, "Let's stop the let's stop the fight at this stage. No, nobody has ever won any boxing com contest." with one hand, and not even with a most dominant hand, with the left hand. And they said, let's just, he said no. He said he's going to fight. He's never going to give up. He was dodging punches. He was dodging punches, and they were giving him. The guy was giving it to him. He had one chance. Tell your neighbor, say one chance. Just one chance. That one chance with the red. You know, your enemy will make a mistake. Uh, yeah, they will make a mistake. One chance. One chance. One chance. And that one chance he gave. Then he gave it with his left hand. And the opponent went to the floor. When they succeeded, in, when the opponent succeeded in standing up, coming to him again, he gave him another one. He had gathered strength in his left hand. Your less dominant hand, God has a way of making that part of you that people have told you is not possible. God has a way of supplying strength. The time that you are down, you are not out. You are gathering st strength. You are gathering momentum. Hallelujah. So you meet, you find critical people in life. And sometimes your husband may be the one critical. Your wife may be the one critical. But the truth is, learn how to believe in you. Because at the end of the day, it is you that we have to move. There are many things you have heard that no other person heard it. There are voices inside of you, nobody is hearing it. But deep down in you, you are saying that it's going to be possible. It's, it will work. It will work, you know. But other people are uh, based on what we know. You know, when people are saying, based on what we know, based on the way this thing has been, based on the way I, I this this thing is, they are not saying the wrong thing. They are speaking from their knowledge. You are speaking from inside of you. What you believe. What you believe. Somebody said to me, said to my wife. I don't know if she will remember now. But, and I will not tell you how that information got to me. <laughs> but it came to me so many years. We are many years old in marriage now. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now listen to this. Before she said yes 
to me or before we tied the knot. A family member of hers has told, let her know and said, so you want to marry this person that cannot even buy a recharge card. You know how cheap recharge cards were. <laughs> you guys are laughing at me now. That was then. Because, because what do I need that if, if it, the money comes into my hand, I'm thinking about how to put it in ministry, do evangelism, buy, build, you know, print trout. And the reason was because I, I took recharge card from that person and I was not able to pay yet. But I said I will pay you. <laughs> you know, many of you won't talk like this. But I'll have to talk my own. And the person wanted to collect his money. And I was thinking that because the person, the person will show me kindness because I'm connected to, you know. But the person did not show me kindness. Behind me, the person was like, no, 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 no. My sister, my person, settle down with this kind of, it can't pay recharge card. Recharge card. Recharge card? No, 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 no. I don't think recharge card is my problem again today now. Can I tell you, don't blame those who, don't, who didn't see your tomorrow. It was how far as their eyes could see. So their criticality is based on what they could see. Don't judge them. Don't, don't, don't get mad at them. It was just their own eyesight. But you saw far. He said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I will give you. As far as your eyes can see, I will give you. What are you seeing? It's not what they are critical about. What are you seeing? Do you see greatness in that ministry? Do you see that you are going far? Canada's church was in my womb. It's here today. Mission House prayer networks around was in my womb. It's out today. There are many things that you see inside this place. Many things are still here. And the same with you. There are many things inside of you. You will achieve them. Amen. Rise up to your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll continue next week about criticality. You know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the critical stage more um, next week.